Let's take a look at how wildcards work inside of collections, as well as how they work with the material linker node. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. All I have set up is just a bunch of spheres. The geometry really doesn't matter too much. It's just the naming conventions that we have here on the actual spheres that is going to be important for what we're trying to do. So I have a collection wired in after our SOP create where we're bringing in all this geometry. And right now I just have it set to be named a visualizer. And then we have our material library set up here, which if I dive in, we have just this karma material with just a color setup so that we can tell what it's being applied to. And then I'm applying the material in there to the actual collection. So the way that we do that is with this percentage and visualizer. Words are a little bit difficult. So it's also able to be applied through this drop down. If I uncheck that, you can see what we get. But if I re select that, it's going to add in that visualizer. So that's collection that we have set up. Now this type of uh, wildcards will work with the collection as well as the material linker. We'll look at both of those. So let's start off with the collection. First of all, the first wildcard is going to be the, the asterisk or the star. If I press control and enter, you can see that that is going to pop that out. Can I make this bigger actually? I can. So with an asterisk there, you can see that we are going to select everything. So it's going to basically just select everything or match any characters. So if I wanted to, I can, you can see that we have these spheres. I can place something before this. So if I do sphere, we're going to select all of our spheres there. So you can see that I get that sphere selected, or if I do sphere and square two, you can see that that's going to select the second one there. So it's selecting anything with sphere in its name, and then any characters after that are also included. Now we can also do this before. So you see, I also have uh, foobar and I have bar bar. So if I do star bar, you can see that I'm going to select everything that has something before bar in its name. So with bar following it. So that's the first wild card. It is super useful for applying things to a you know a large number of materials or of, of objects, I mean. Uh, and that's a, a common one that I use all the time. And then we also have a, another one, which is gonna be the question mark. So if you look here, I have apple, applesauce, and apply. So if I type in APPL and then question mark, it's going to allow us to select anything that has, or any character that is in this spot. So it's gonna match apple and it's also gonna match apply but it's not gonna match applesauce because it's only going to match one single character. If we wanted to select all of those, we would need to put that asterisk back there. So the asterisk is good for multiple objects or multiple spaces, multiple characters in your name, whereas this question mark is only going to match one individual thing, one individual character. So. The next one is one that partially works. And actually, before I move further, I want to point out this is from the documentation on the Pixar website. So if you don't know, Pixar is the one that actually created USD. They have some documentation that goes along with it. And there are some documentation on these wildcards and collections. Um, this is the way that things are supposed to work as far as I'm concerned with USD. It's supposed to work this way, but in Houdini, it doesn't seem to quite work properly. So I don't know if it's a bug with their implementation or kind of what's going on. But according to the documentation, this one in particular doesn't seem to work the way that the documentation lays out. So we have our meshes here with the names Prim A, and then I have two things that are childs of this, or children of this, I guess. So we have Prim A, and then child one, and then we have prem A leaf B. So inside this prem A child one, I have child two and then leaf B. And with this next wild card, if I type in leaf and then, sorry, leaf A, and then I do, sorry, let me back up, prem A, and then two slashes, leaf B, 
according to the documentation, this is supposed to match any sort of characters in between this. So it should select prem A, child one, child two, then leaf B. And it should also apply to prem A and leaf B. But if I go ahead and press enter there, control and enter, you see we're only matching one thing, which is this prem A leaf B. For whatever reason, it's not matching both. And I don't think it has anything to do. It shouldn't, yeah, that doesn't matter. So for whatever reason, it's not matching both. And I don't know why, because according to the documentation, this should be working. So if you know the answer to this, if I'm doing something wrong here, please feel free to enlighten me because it just doesn't seem to, to work properly. So I just also want to point out that this also works for the material linker. All of these work basically the same way for the material linker. So if I go ahead and double click in here, I already have our karma material, material dragged over. And you can see that, actually before I do this, let me uncheck that assigned to geometry. And then let's take a look at this pattern. So I can put this star in here as well. And you see that's gonna select basically everything. If I type in the sphere and then this asterisk, you can see that that's going to apply to all of our spheres. If I type in the asterisk and then the bar, you can see that we get bar bar and foo bar. So it's selecting everything that comes before bar as bar on the end of it. If I go ahead and type in the APPL and then the question mark, you see that we get the apple in the apply. It doesn't pick up the applesauce. If we type in a star afterward, it does go ahead and pick that up. And then lastly with the slashes we have, I keep wanting to type in leaf, but prem A slash leaf B, we only get that prem A leaf, leaf B there. And you can see that with that, if I go ahead and preview, you can see what that applies to. It's the same, same thing as we're getting here. We're not selecting that leaf B that's under these two childs for whatever reason, as the documentation says it is supposed to. Now, there's also a couple of more that some of them work and some of them don't. So let's go ahead and go back to this collection here. And in here, this one doesn't seem to work as I thought it was working before, but um, for whatever reason, when I was messing around again before recording, it didn't seem to work properly. So this is supposed to be the union one. So if we do backslash foo star, and then we do a plus icon and then slash the star and then bar, this is supposed to only select the um, foo foo, the bar bar, and the foo bar, but it's also selecting foo. So if I go ahead and just select foo, you can see that that's being selected with this as well. So this one doesn't seem to be working properly either. I don't think, yeah, the space in there doesn't matter. If you put a white space in between or a blank space in between the two, it's supposed to work the same as that plus sign, which it, I guess, seems to, but it doesn't seem to be working properly in here as well. So if you know what, what's going on with that, uh, feel free to let me know what's up with that as well. Now, we also have a ampersand that we can use, or the and sign, and that's going to be an intersection. So with this foo and bar, we get just the foo bar being selected, but not the foo foo and the bar bar. So it's going to basically just um, add these add these on. So if I go ahead and type in foo bar, you can see that nothing is going to change there. So we also have a difference, which is going to be the minus sign. So now if I go ahead and type in that, we're going to get the difference of the two. So with the foo and the bar in there, we're going to select foo, but not foo foo and not foo bar or bar bar, but we are going to select the bar. Oh, sorry, it's going to select foo and foo foo but not foo bar or bar bar. I said that said that wrong. So you see we have foo is the last one we looked at earlier. Go ahead and type in foo. You can see which one that applies to. So we're getting 
the proper selection with that. So we also have this little, I don't even know what to call this little icon, this little squiggly. It's like the, um, not that it's like the tilde, but with your shift key. I don't know. I don't know what this little squiggly line is called. Um, <laughs> Let me know if you know the name of this thing. I can't ever remember it. I knew it at one point in time, but uh, this little squiggly squiggly line here, uh, this is gonna be the complement. So um, this one also doesn't work. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do slash foo. So what this is supposed to select is matching everything except for anything that has this in its name and that doesn't work either. So it's supposed to select everything but foo and foo foo, but you can see that it's not applying to anything inside of our geometry. So not actually exactly sure what's going on with that as well. Um, feel free to let me know if you know the answer to why that doesn't work as well. And all of these, like I said before, all of these wild cards that are working, work inside the material linker as well. I'm guessing this is just kind of basically a collection kind of internally is how it works. The same sort of logic at the very least. But anyways, that is how wildcards or the wildcards that are listed um, in the Pixar documentation work. I'll leave a link to that, by the way, in the description. I don't know if I said that, but I'll leave a link to the Pixar documentation for the collections um, inside of uh, the description. So if you want to grab that and follow along and read through it. It can be a little bit con confusing, and I, and I do recommend that you go through um, and set this up. Even if you don't you know, go download the project file from my Patreon, I recommend that you at least set this up and go through it and, and understand what's happening with the wild cards uh, because it is kind of difficult to understand without you know, looking at it yourself. So um, go through and play around with it and you know, learn how the wild cards work inside of... USD, because if you use it a lot, because it is something that can really save you a lot of time. There are a lot more. I was trying to find a video. I've been looking for it. There's a, it may have been like the launch video for when the Material Linker came out. There is a ton of wildcards that they go over in a video on the Side Effects channel, but that's like the only place that they mention it. I can't find the wildcard like list anywhere online in their documentation or anything for the material linker but that video if you know what video i'm talking about i i think it was it was a, a, it was a talk it was like a, it was a longer video it was either a talk or a one of the like the launch videos they were applying it to like a building if you know what video i'm talking about please link that video in the description i cannot find it i don't remember where it was at but that video was like a gold mine of of wild cards uh for the material linker so like I said, if you know that, please link it in the description so that we can you know, go over that with everybody or, or at least have it available for everybody because there are so many, so many um, wild cards that they go over in that video. And it was a talk by like literally side effects. So um, please help me find that video. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. That is kind of an introduction to wild cards with collections and maybe just a little bit of an introduction to the collection node. Um, Lots of cool things that you can do with that to kind of group things together. It's kind of like groups, honestly, in Solaris. So lots of cool things that you can do with that. Um, play around with it. Look through the Pixar documentation. Like I said, that'll link and that'd be linked into the description. Um, so read through that. There's lots of good information on their uh, website on USD. This whole like getting started thing is, is super useful. So um, if you're interested in learning more about USD, definitely take a read through that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.